Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's Wisconsin Farm Bureau Lunch and Learn. I am Wendy Cannell, the Senior Director of Member Relations here at Farm Bureau, and we are excited to have you join us this afternoon. If you are joining us for the live conversation, don't forget that you are muted, and if you have a question, you will need to unmute yourself. Or if you have a question, uh, you can definitely include it in the chat section, and I will make sure that Melissa gets that question while we are here today. If you are watching the recorded version and want to leave a comment or a question in the comment section below, please feel free to do that as well, and we will try to get those answers for you. So with that, I am going to toss it over to Melissa Pluckelman, who is the Outreach Specialist at the National Children's Center for Rural and Agricultural Health Safety. Uh, so I want to thank Melissa for being with us today, and I'm going to uh, toss it over to her. Well, hello everyone. Welcome. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. I am going to start off by saying this is my first webinar that I'm presenting. So I am a little nervous, but I'm also very excited to share to share the information and the resources that we have with you. So I'm just going to go ahead really quick here and share my screen so that I can kind of show my presentation. Um, Okay, so right now you should be seeing uh, my presentation. Is that, oh, no, I didn't push share. Okay, now you should be seeing my presentation. Is that correct, Wendy? Maybe yes, she's- Yes, I muted myself. <laughs> yes. That is correct. <laughs> okay, perfect. So yes, you should be able to see that now. So let's get started. Again, hello everyone. My name is Melissa Pluckelman and I am the Outreach Specialist at the National Children's Center for Rural and Agricultural Health and Safety. And what we do here is we do research on children and youth in agriculture and how they're getting hurt, injured, or sick. And then we try to come up with ways to prevent um, that from happening. So what, you, what we're gonna do today, some of the objectives that I have, is I wanna discuss the benefits of growing up on a farm. We know that there's a lot of great things out there for kids who are raised on farms, but we also want to explore some of the challenges and risks for those children, and then discuss some strategies for keeping them safe and healthy, and then determine um, how we kind of balance the risks and the benefits. So a little bit about us and where we come from. Like I said, I work for the National Children's Center, but I also work for the National Farm Medicine Center. And both of our centers are located um, in the Marshfield Clinic Research Foundation. So that's kind of, we get some of our funding from the clinic, we get some of our funding from donor dollars, and we get some of our funding from applying for grants. So that's how we can continue to do the work that we're doing. So first off today, I want to talk a little bit about kind of the benefits of raising children on farms. Um, we know that there's um, we know that there's some benefits. Children learn the definition of work. They learn the the circle of life, and they learn to respect life, and they learn a lot of responsibility. Not only that, but a recent study has showed that farm girls actually have a healthier mental health than girls that are raised in town or in cities. Another study that we're doing right now is the Wisconsin Infant Study Cohort, or the WISC study, and that's proven that children that are born and raised on farms are less likely to get allergies and asthma. So we definitely know that there are a lot of benefits to children growing up on farms. But there are also a lot of risks. While farms are a lot of fun, they can also be very dangerous. Um, so usually child care isn't available or affordable for farm families. So parents take their children into the work site with them. This creates a distraction for the adults who is working, risking the adult's life, as well as any time that they are taking any amount of supervision off the child, it also puts the child in a place of danger. I was raised on a dairy farm in Stetsonville, Wisconsin, and like I said, in such a small city and in such a small town, um, child care just wasn't an option for my parents. So I understand the challenges with this. My mom worked as a stay-at-home mom and also full-time on the farm. My dad worked a full-time job off the farm as well as farming. So when my mom had to go out and feed the cows or put them in for milking, we went out with her as children. And child care wasn't really an option in 
anywhere near us. And for a young couple like my parents trying to pay off the farm meant that there wasn't a lot of funding to pay someone else to watch the five, the five kids on the farm. So I understand how big of a challenge childcare really is. Um, but we know that, you know, there are other challenges and risks on the farm, injury, death, um, having friends over and keeping the visitors safe, keeping the far keeping the family in harmony as you try to raise kids and live and work on the farm. Um, and we know that we know that because of the census, we know that um, in the U.S. we are the home to about two million farms, with almost nine hundred thousand children living on those farms. Along with that, another 250,000 youth are hired by farmers. Also, with agritourism being such a popular thing, we see millions of families and their children visiting farms each year. So where's the benefit and where's the risk and where's the balance of that is kind of what we're gonna talk about. Because of the size of most family farms, there are no enforcements for how old a person needs to be to be able to live, work, or visit a farm. Therefore, while agriculture is one of the most dangerous occupations for adults, we also see that it is the cause of many child injuries and fatalities. And that's what I'm showing you here today. Um, and to me, in this graphic, the two statistics that really stand out to me are that about 33 children are injured in agriculture every single day, and a child dies in an agricultural related incident about every three days. Um, so there's good news and there's bad news in this next chart that I'm showing you. The good news is, is that you can see, according to this chart, that the number of injuries is going down in youth in agriculture. The bad news is, is it's still too high. So this says up top, household youth. And what that means is that's youth who live on a farm. So when we have the farm and there's a house connected to that and the youth are living there, um, that's what this means. So what we're seeing here is for every thousand children living on a farm, six of them under the age of 10 are injured every year. 13 children ages 10 to 15 are injured every year. And seven youth ages 16 to 19 are hurt. That means that about 2.6% of our children are injured per year on farms. So that percentage sounds super low but really any percent of children getting hurt on farms is too high. And that's why we do what we do. Now, when we talk about these injury rates, I need you to understand that most injuries are not reported. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention, or the CDC, used to partner with the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, which was NIOSH, or is NIOSH. They, they carried out surveillance initiatives to find children that were injured on farms and report those numbers. However, that was a huge undertaking and still many injuries were missed because they just went unreported by parents. Um, parents don't report every time a child falls down and, and gets a cut or gets pushed over by a cow and hits their head. And this surveillance is no longer funded, so there's really no way to know for sure how many children and youth are injured on farms today. So you can see this chart went from 2001 to 2014 when they did keep track of those numbers, but even still, there could be a lot of injuries that were missed. This next graph that I'm showing you, um, again, this is very similar when we talk about fatality rates. We are a little more certain of fatality of youth on farms just due to the national census that is put out. But when you look at fatality rates, you can see that they are much higher than the injury rates. And again, that's just because we know more about um, how, to, how to keep track of that. And you can see on this chart, they're much higher in agriculture than all other in industries combined. Oops, sorry about that. A large reason for it being so much larger in agriculture and so much higher is because farming is one of those industries where farming and home life intersect. The entire family lives on the farm and they live at the job site. You don't see this with construction, mining, refuse and recyclable collection, or manufacturing. 
So children are raised on the farm and when they walk out the front door, the tractor, the cattle, the dangerous chemicals, fences, on and on and on are right there, right outside their front door. So it's harder to supervise them every second and easier for children to get injured or even killed. So when we do research, we find out um, what are the three causes of injuries and fatalities. So the three top causes of fatality on farms are machinery. Um, and that's more so like children riding on tractors and um, falling off, getting run over, or even um, so like that would include getting caught in a PTO, getting run over by an implement when they're um, maybe in between the tractor and the implement. Next is motor vehicles, and that's gonna include things like ATVs, UTVs, um, a farm truck. Kids like to jump in the back of them, and when they're riding, they'll fall out. They might hit their head or get run over. And then the third one that we see is drowning. And just to kind of explain that, it's not always only in water, but also in manure or any time anyone um, dies because they were sucked into a grain bin or into grain in any way is also considered consider drowning. Um, Non-fatal is falls, and those can be same level falls where they maybe slip and fall or they trip over something, or it can be multiple level falls where they're falling out of a haymow or they're falling out of the silo. Animals are a big cause of non-fatal injuries, and again, machinery and vehicles. Um, so we know that there is, there's some culture and there's some tradition tied with farming. And farmers are concerned about who's gonna take over the next generation. And because of that concern, farmers try harder to get their children involved and excited in farming. Also, sometimes they need the extra labor, and so they bring their children out to the barn or out onto the farm to kind of help them out as they're working through chores. Um, and again, they don't have access or funding for childcare, so they take their children right out to the farm with them. And we're gonna talk a little bit more later about um, the problems with this and maybe what some of the resources could be. Um, and we see also a lot of myths when we talk to farmers. Farmers say, young children riding on tractors is necessary to get them interested in farming. And what I wanna share with you today is that tractors are responsible for 41% of farm deaths of children under the age of 15. And even though we know that statistic, we know that that's true, four out of five farm children are regularly riding tractors with their family members, whether it's mom, dad, brother, sister, or even grandpa or grandma. Another myth that we hear from farmers is it's okay to have children ride on the equipment as long as there is a cab. And what we wanna say about that is that cabs can provide a false sense of security. They do not guarantee the safety of extra riders. We know that children have a lot of energy and a very short attention span. So when they get into the tractor, they might sit still for a couple minutes, they're excited, but then pretty soon they're wiggling, they're moving around, they're trying to get up out of the seat, um, and that creates distraction for the person actually driving the tractor. And what happens is that they might, um, they might miss something that's out in the field, hit a big bump, they could overturn, they might run off the road or miss a driveway. Um, and even though cabs have rollover protection built into them, that's really only protecting the person in the driver's seat. That rollover protection of a cab does not protect the person in what we call a buddy seat, or more specifically, the instructor seat that might be in a tractor with a cab. Also, we see a lot of times when children start to wiggle and move around, they can very easily hit a window latch or the door latch and open that up and fall right out of that tractor. And there's no time to stop when that happens. It happens in seconds. And then we see runovers occur. Another myth is that farmers will tell us farm kids are stronger, they're faster, they're smarter than urban youth. They are fully capable of performing farm chores typically done by adults. And what we say to that is that, yeah, teens' character, characteristics often affect their ability to perform 
farm work safely. So when we think about um, teens, I agree that, you know, they are, they should be out and they can be out helping and working, but we need to remember that they are still only teenagers. And teenagers sometimes, um, if something happens and it was something that maybe shouldn't have happened or they didn't expect it to happen, they get scared that they've done something wrong. And instead of calling an adult, they're gonna try to fix it by themselves. And sometimes that can cause problems. Or as we're gonna talk even more, um, sometimes they wanna prove themselves. They wanna prove that they can do as much as an adult. And they their bodies just aren't ready for all of that. And they'll overexert themselves to the point of over fatigued and as they try to do some of these chores, they're not always thinking safety first because they're tired, they're worn out, their bodies just aren't ready for that. And then we see some injuries happening then too. <clears throat> um, teen characteristics, you know, they have a risk taking attitude. Teenagers don't think anything can hurt them. So when they go in by a cow, they're like, oh, I can handle this. You know, I'm, I'm tough, I'm strong, she can't, she can't hurt me, so she kicks a little. They're okay with that because they think they're invincible. And sometimes they're not always mature enough to really think that through before they go in. They're reluctant to ask questions because again, they want to look like they know what they're doing so that adults will trust them. So we need to kind of talk to teenagers about, it's okay to ask questions. Um, and then the other things I've kind of already talked about, you know, they're, they're driven to prove themselves. So they'll, they'll overexert themselves or they'll work extra hard. Um, or sometimes their enthusiasm might outweigh their judgment. Other factors with this is that really we don't have any laws or regulations as to age and hours that youth can work on their family's farm. So sometimes um, youth will be working many more hours than they should be. And and there's nothing to stop that from happening because we don't have those laws or regulations right now. The last thing is that um, we see a lot more people visiting farms. Um, between 2007 and 2012, we see that there's a 42% increase of people going out to agritourism operations. And once at that place, there's a lot of hazards that a lot of times we don't always think about. Visitors are unfamiliar with farms. So while a farmer might know when a horse is going to get spooked and knows to take a step back, or if there's a petting zoo, a farmer might be able to sense when a cow is getting uncomfortable, you're getting too close to her calf or something like that. Visitors don't see those same cues and they can actually be putting themselves in harm's way without ever even knowing it. The other thing is that the more people visiting the farm, the more distractions there are for the farm workers. So sometimes instead of focusing on what they're doing and how to incorporate safety into what they're doing, they're focused on a farm family that's come to visit or maybe one of their buddies came out to the farm. So there's added distractions for the workers as well. So now that we've talked about all these challenges and risks, like how do we really address this? How do we stop these how do we stop these injuries and fatalities from happening? And I think the biggest thing is we need to start this conversation, but it's also one of the hardest things to do is talk about safety and talk about changing um, the safety that you're, the safety procedures that you're currently doing on a farm. If you went home today and told grandpa, like you don't want Johnny riding on the tractor anymore, both your dad or your, your spouse's dad and your son are gonna be disappointed. Like he's already been taking him out for tractor rides and they both enjoy that time together. So how do you start that conversation without disappointing everybody on the farm? In the same sense, if you tell a neighbor that you think it's dangerous for them to be carrying their toddler on the lawnmower with them, or that you think their eight-year-old shouldn't be driving the four-wheeler up and down the farm lane, that neighbor is gonna think that you're telling them how to parent and they're gonna get very um, defensive. Um, and therefore we have a few resources to kind of help you start these conversations. So the first one, the first resource that I have for you is we have a web page, and it's the Child Egg Safety Network. And that web page you can see right here is www.childeggsafety.org. 
And on that webpage, we have posters, logos, we have radio ads and videos, and just some things that you could share with your neighbors or other people who live and work on the farm with you. One poster I have here specifically is just kind of showing that the tractor is not the place for quality time. You know, get them off of the tractor, have them read a book together, have them do some gardening together. Um, what we do know is that a lot of times too, when we take children on tractors, that extra vibration or the noise isn't always, um, isn't always taken care of, or like it's, it's more harmful for a child's body. So again, not the place to spend time with your children. And this is a good way to help you start that conversation is through some of these videos or some of these posters that you'll find on this webpage. Um, we understand that you wanna nurture interest in farming. And so a lot of times like the way to do that is to take them out on the tractor, it's so much fun. Take them out by the cows, let them pet them, let them touch them, you know, let them see them. But there are other ways to nurture that interest in farming without putting them in harm's way. There's lots of toys and games and simulators out there that you can share with your children. Um, I wanna share this really awesome quote with you from David Schwabel who said, a powerful way to entice children to be interested in farming is for children to witness their family enjoying the production of food. A garden is an ideal location for this as parents can take time to explain what is happening in a safer environment while avoiding the stress, risk, and hustle and bustle of a busy work site. So that's just another way to keep children interested without maybe taking them out in the combine or taking them out when you're spraying the fields with herbicides, pesticides, etc. Um, Another thing that we have here, another resources that we have is a way to keep children out of the work site. So as I stated before, childcare isn't always an option. While we say that it is the best option to find some childcare while you're working, it's not always the best option for you. It might not be available or maybe it's financially not an option for you. So what are some other options? And we have an entire booklet um, that you can find online that talks about creating safe play areas on farms. So this will teach you ways to, com to combine play areas with farm toys so that maybe they can still see what's going on on the farm, but they can't get into the work site. And this resource is gonna talk a lot also about having physical barriers in between where they can play and where the work is going on. For example, if a child sees a tractor coming down the farm lane, you know, they're very excited. Maybe dad or grandpa or mom is inside of there. Maybe they have ridden a tractor in the past and they love it. And if they go running out, there are so many uh, blind spots when you're in a tractor or in any type of um, farm machinery, you can't always see them. And so if there's that physical barrier there of a fence or a gate where the child can't go past it, you know that they're safe. So they have an area to play and still see what's going on. And supervision is easier when you have that physical barrier. Um, another resource that we've created is our agricultural youth work guidelines. And these are to be used by parents or supervisors. And it just kind of talks about when is, when is a youth ready to do a job? And we understand that it's not always about the age of the youth. Sometimes it has more to do with their maturity or their height or their weight. For example, I know that we teach tractor safety in Wisconsin to 11 year olds. And some 11 year olds, I used to teach that, and some 11 year olds, they are definitely large enough, they can reach the pedals, they're strong enough to push in the clutch, to push in the brake, they can see over the steering wheel, but sometimes they are not mature enough to be out in the field and understand that when something goes wrong, they need to shut everything down or they're not mature enough to know you don't get to check your Snapchat while you're driving down the road in that tractor. So that's kind of what these go over. We do have an age that we recommend, but we also have questions for you to go through that say, can your child reach and operate the controls? Are they mature enough to do this job? Earlier I talked about maybe gardening is the way to go. And we do have um, a guideline 
also on hand harvesting and when is the youth ready to maybe do more time out in the garden. Um, so all of these are age appropriate tasks and the way that we picked the tasks, we have the 51 most common tasks that youth are doing most often. So if you go to the website, which is here, www.cultivatesafety.org backslash work, you can find these 51 different tasks and look at when is the youth living or working on my farm ready to do these different tasks. Some great things about this, we made them mobile friendly. So if you have a cell phone outside and you want your child to maybe start this new task and you're like, are they really ready? Um, it's a great time. You can look it up easily on your cell phones or on your tablets. Look it up and kind of look at what are some of the hazards. Um, not only that, but these are interactive. So if you want to, you can actually go to the interactive section and it will ask you some questions to help you decide if they're ready. You can do a read only or you can even do the print option where maybe you print it off and go through this with the youth because it says right there, what are some of the hazards and how can they protect themselves from those hazards? Another um, resource that we have is that we do have a Wisconsin ROPS rebate program where if you have a tractor that maybe doesn't have a rollover bar on it and you want the youth to start driving that tractor, um, maybe it's time to look into putting a rollover bar on that tractor. And the great thing about it is that we have a program where we will pay 70% of the cost for you to put that rollover bar on that tractor and just keep those kids or those youth a little bit safer when they're ready to start driving. Um, also, we have some information on ATV safety. We are noticing that ATVs and skid steers are becoming larger areas of, um, of or larger hazards on farms. So we have some information on those as well. Grain safety for youth. Um, the Grain Handling Safety Coalition partnered with us and we made an entire curriculum on how can we keep youth safe when working with grain because we know that that's a huge hazard for everyone on farms, but especially for youth. Um, we have a couple other resources here. If you go to the, our Cultivate Safety webpage and go to our resources, you can find all kinds of good things that you can go through. Or if you're inviting people out to your farm, we do have a safe agritourism website that will show you signs that you can hang, help you decide where do you need barriers, how can you keep your workers and your visitors safe when they come and visit the farm. Um, so next I want to talk just a little bit about how do you balance the benefit and the risks. So now I've told you the benefits, I've told you the risks, and I've told you what some of your resources are. Um, but how can you keep children safe and happy on farms? And we need to remember that usually that's the job of the adult or the supervisor. So set boundaries and rules and enforce them when you're on the farm with youth. Always provide supervision when they're out there, especially if they're young. Make sure that you're not working, that you're actually supervising. And if they're old enough to be doing tasks, just make sure that you're around so that they know um, that you're there so that they keep safety at the forefront of their mind and they know that you are keeping it there too. Teach them about responsibility and always be a good role model when you're out there on the farm with the, with the youth. Um, really quickly, I know I'm running out of time. Our top five safety strategies, keep kids away from tractors. If they're not ready to drive on their own, if they're not of the proper age and maturity level, then just keep them away from the tractors. Keep young children out of the work site. It not only distracts the adults, but it also is, is a hazard for the youth. Ensure that the youth are doing age appropriate tasks. Um, and when you're doing that, make sure that the environment is as safe as possible for them. Eliminate hazards, take away the distractions, um, make sure that they have protective, personal protective equipment and that they actually wear it. And then finally, always provide training and always talk about safety. And I know how hard it is with teenagers. You tell them to be safe over and over, they roll their eyes and they say, yeah, yeah, I know, I heard it. But the more you say it, the more they're gonna think about it and the safer your children are gonna be. So just to kind of wrap up here, there are a ton of benefits to having kids on the farm and there's so much um, delights that you can reap when you raise your kids on the farm. We're not telling you that you shouldn't. 
We're just saying um, that we want to help you make your farm and the work site safe for your entire family and all the workers on the farm so everyone can live a long and healthy life. So that's my presentation for you today. I hope that this helps you a little bit and if it saves even one life, then it was worth the half hour that we all shared here today. If you have any questions, I would entertain those at this time. And I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and kind of look <laughs> into the chat. I have a question. I'm Wes Raditz, I'm the district coordinator in District 7 and work with six county farm bureaus to help their programs and such. You have a lot of wonderful resources. Is there something that might help a county farm bureau, like for instance, our uh, promotion and education committee or something, to have a successful, some kind of event or a field day or something that would help with um, you know the planning or what what works, what doesn't sort of thing that you, you know, that maybe you have available? Yeah, so that's awesome that we, you bring that up. We are kind of experimenting with some of that right now. We're doing a child egg injury prevention workshop. And we did hold one in Marshfield, Wisconsin um, earlier last year. And we're doing our fourth one, I don't know if you can make it, <laughs> we're doing our fourth one this month in Hershey, Pennsylvania. But you're right, we're kind of, looking at can we host more workshops and and will people come to them if we host workshops and we talk about all these resources and we really show you how to use them and then we help you to make a plan along with our workshop we also are giving out grants um, they're small they're five thousand dollar grants but grants to organizations who come to our workshop learn about the resources that are out there and either create more resources for us to share or create ways to share those resources uh, we'll give that grant out to those individuals. So if you're interested in a workshop like that, like I said, our fourth one and our final one planned for now is coming up later this month in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Um, and you can find that on our web page. If you go to, um, well, if you, I can actually type it in the chat so that you can see it there, but I can type out where to find that. Um, how, how would a county, who should a county contact or a person contact to maybe arrange a, a demonstration that you would have and put on? Or how would they put it on themselves, you know, have something locally that they put on themselves? Oh, very good point. Um, you could probably contact me about that. So um, Melissa Pluckelman, and I had my email address on there. It's pluckelman.melissa at marshfieldresearch.org. You can contact me and then I would get you, get you the information that you need and the resources or connect you with the people who are putting on the workshops. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Great question, Wes. I also wanted to mention before we run out of time that September 15th, through the 21st is National Farm Safety and Health Week. So a lot of these resources are great to share during that time. While we should be practicing farm safety all year long, uh, we should really, um, we can put an emphasis on it as we look at different areas of farm safety during that week. So we will definitely be sharing some of those resources as we uh, get closer to that here just uh, in a couple of weeks, so. Awesome, yes. Are there any other questions? If not, I want to thank everybody for joining us today uh, for Lunch and Learn. And I want to thank Melissa especially for taking the time to share all of those great resources with us. I know that uh, some of those guidelines for um, youth working on farms and identifying the hazards, we had some members um, look at some of those things when they were being created. And so that's exciting to see that come to fruition. Uh, we can definitely share those resources with everyone. Again, the websites that were listed. Um, but thank you again to everyone for being a part of, of today's uh, Lunch and Learn. You can join us again next month the, on October 2nd. And we're actually going to be doing a preview of this year's 100th Wisconsin Farm Bureau Annual Meeting and YFA Conference, so you will not want to miss out on that. With that, enjoy your day, and we will see you soon.